Welcome in everyone. It is the Abyssal Mist event. I spent a lot of time yesterday playing this event and learning it and uh, trying to figure out a few little tricks that I could share with you to help hopefully make it a little bit easier for you. I completed the entire event yesterday. You can see there I've got 10,000 gems. I haven't any more. I'm going to show you the event track as ever. But I'm just going to speed through it a little bit because I can show you what the actual skin looks like as well. I don't normally complete these in a day. Uh, but if you do want to complete this one and unlock the Lost Knight at the end. So that you can farm up some more event chests. It's going to cost you about 3,000 to 4,000 gems just from refreshing the portal. I bought a few event chests as well because I was hunting the new heroes. The good news is I did unlock the new hero so I'm going to be able to try them out and show you how they work. And uh, the event skin this time around is not too bad. I wasn't particularly excited by the pictures that we got shown last week. And this is what happens when you complete an event as well. You always see me talking about this but I can never show you. So when you complete the event you will get the end or is it. And that, is to un that is to get an extra 5,000 event points. Uh, once you do that then you will get the lost knight and i've already done a whole video about the lost knight and how to farm free event chests from him but the lost knight is an event roaming monster he shows up at 5 p.m every single day once you have the quest he is unlocked he will show up that day there it is look the lost knight he will show up once you do have that quest he will show up at 5 p.m and every time you beat him he will drop an event chest so basically this event is 45 days long so by completing it on day one i've just got 45 free event chests and this is what the skin looks like when it's all together it's pretty clean i'm not gonna lie it's not too bad and i quite like the sword as well but let me know what you think to it in the comments i quite like it to be honest and then this is a quick look at the build that i used to complete the event i'm using the uh mythic hammer and I've got that set up for damage. I've got three chain damage charms on there. And I have changed a few charms on my mythic armor to rogue. And then using the rogue class. Which I'm going to have to now because I ain't got any spanners left. But using the rogue class I'm going to be able to test out Lucius in the rift for you as well. And then moving swiftly on. These are a few of the tricks that I've learned just from playing the portal. If you find 20 enemies, if you count 20 enemies, not including the boss, if you count 20 enemies, you will have a chance to get a boss on round 3 and round 5. 20 is the magic number for this event. It's brand new, so there you go. And then when they get stealth on them, you can dispel it, which is handy. You can just like slap them with a hero power if you want, but you can dispel it. And then finish it off with your weapon the same works for sacrifice as well sacrifice is where you're going to be losing event points because the enemy will disappear but there's a few neat little tricks that you can use to get around sacrifice you can dispel it so your dispel heroes on base power are don diego camille ayako and Dokyo off the top of my head and then another fun thing you can do as well, if you're struggling with these portals, if there's a lot of enemies getting sacrificed, if you're a bit newer to the game and you want to um, reach up to one of the higher portals, this one is going to be useful. When they've got sacrifice on them, if you stun or freeze them, the sacrifice will just disappear, but the enemy will stay there. I, I fully expected it to work, I fully expected this enemy to get sacrificed, but I tried it out anyway, and it worked. The sacrifice disappeared and the enemy just stays there. The same works for stun as well. So you can use Dokio for this because Dokio has stun on his rage power. It's worth noting as well that the chance for stun or freeze to work depends on what level your hero is. So if you've already got Ayako leveled up, probably going to be better. Or Melissan or Grim or any of them. It's going to work just as well and you're not going to have to go out of your way to try and level up a brand new hero just for the portal if you are newer i would recommend ayako first because ayako heals you and she's got the dispel on her base power dokio has got the same he's got stun on his rage and he's got dispel on his base power but he don't heal you so it's probably going to be a little bit safer to use ayako for this that is the stun as well my ayako is max star so she gets weakened and the stun works just as well 
And then I want to talk about uh, Dokio because I tested the way that he interacts with some of the gauntlets and the dark gauntlet is, well, it's just wrong. The text on it now is just wrong now that it's been released. It's not right at all. So the first one, this is the Maverick Gauntlet. And because he's a mage, the Maverick Gauntlet is a mage gauntlet. It fills it up a little bit more than it should do. He's still going to have to punch, but that is quite a chunk of rage just from his base power. And it's to do with the way that the gauntlets interact with the heroes that they speed up. You generally get more rage from using the correct gauntlet, from using heroes that that gauntlet speeds up. I've done a gauntlet video as well. The dark gauntlet says it boosts rage generating abilities that hit an enemy. Now, this bit of text were added in for Queen Critter because Queen Critter is a, is a warrior and it gets about 90% rage just from using queen critter's base but now she's not the only hero that generates rage and hits an enemy at the same time so now that text is wrong so if you're reading that and thinking it's going to use it's going to work with dokio it done i'm going to show you it right now you get 50 percent rage gain because it's not a mage gauntlet and dokio is a mage so yeah that text is a little bit outdated and it's wrong now they should have just written queen critter on it in the first place but they did they didn't they decided to write it in a roundabout way so now it's just incorrect and as you'll see here it gets 50 percent rage it don't get any extra from the dark gauntlet uh so yeah they looks like they're gonna have to change that text again or do something to kind of differentiate the two heroes and then i did it with the rebel gauntlet and with the Rebel Gauntlet, Dokio charges in four moves with the maxed mage speed and it fills it all the way up to the top. So yeah, that is how Dokio interacts with the gauntlets. And then I'm just going to leave you with some footage from the portal. This is how I played the entire thing. I uh, just used the damage hammer. I've got a few rogue charms equipped. And I just auto'd it all with Samael for the delay and because he hits the entire row. The Lawful Gauntlet to speed him up and Kira because she deals quite a lot of damage to a single enemy. And I just auto'd the entire thing like this. The hammer is attuned to undead. It's not attuned to cult, but it's attuned to undead. And uh, one thing that I did notice is when the boss uses Sacrifice, he tends to always do it on the on your left which is where auto points to in the first place so that is quite handy because if he survives your first hits and then he uses sacrifice the auto will jump over to the enemy they put sacrifice on and i didn't lose many enemies using this setup to be honest uh, but yeah that's how i did it and these are my top tips for the abyssal miss portal subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i have been james b online good luck out there